Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Sweet Spot Homeschooling. It is 104 degrees right now and I just turned the little air conditioner in my bedroom off so that I can film this video, so sorry if I start sweating up a storm. In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you all about Bookshark Science Level K. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is the instructor's guide for Bookshark Science Level K, which will cover biology, botany, and physics. Um, I will be putting this in its own little binder. I don't use the Bookshark big binders because it's just too big. Um, though I might change my mind about that. I have more Bookshark that I'm doing this year than I've ever done. And I don't know, I might need might need to revamp how I do things. So here's an example of a week of Bookshark science. Um, you can see it's a four day a week schedule with the fourth day being a little bit different than the other three days. And you can also see that it's pretty brief. There's just a couple pages of reading every day, um, a couple questions to answer every day, and then we've got these optional activities that we can do. I do those whenever we have time. If it's a busy day or if we've been getting kind of behind in science, I might skip some. just depends on the week. This is the beauty of homeschool. We can do what we want. Um, but basically, you would open this up to this week. You would grab your us born children's encyclopedia open it up to these pages read these pages do the activity questions with your child if you chose to do the optional activities you could do those right then i usually save stuff like this for either right before lunch or right after lunch and then um that's what you would do for these three days and then for the fourth day you're actually watching the dvd and then doing an actual like experiment and this one is not optional. Then it has a supply section. It lets you know, oh, the color just changed really blue. There we go. Um, it lets you know we provide ask. So that's your science kit. So in your science kit, you need to grab your magnifying glass. You need to provide all of these things, but you can see dirt. Everyone has that jar with lid, a cup to scoop dirt, but really you can use anything to scoop dirt water, leaf litter. I don't know if we'll be able to find that here. I might have to go to the park. Baggy, sheet paper, gloves, optional, uh, paintbrush or stick to pick up a bug, or just your fingers. The also nice part is that it gives you what you're gonna need to provide next week so that you can add it to your list, like celery you might need to go buy. And just make sure as you're reading this, if you have these things to make a note if you have it or not, and then if you need to go get it. Then on the back of that, it shows you what to do day one. So you're going to read, do the activity sheet, and then here's your optional do together. So for instance, this one's just like go out and find a bunch of rocks, like all different kinds and have your kids look at the differences and what is the same. Look at it under your microscope. Look at it under the magnifying glass. Do they smell the same? If you drop it, do they make the same sounds? Draw a picture of each rock. Just rock study. Or you could also do fossil fun. So this is basically just making a dough and then making impressions in the dough. So you, this shows you how to make dough, but you could just use Play-Doh or clay. You could also do sugar cookies and then bake them so you can eat them. That's the idea I vote for. So that was an example of day one. So on day one, it has you do activity sheet questions one and two. So basically it's just review questions about what you just read. My daughter is not reading yet, so she's definitely not going to be able to write her answers the fourth week. So I will just write down exactly what she tells me um, and kind of just act as her scribe. And then if you aren't sure of the answers, it's somewhere. Oh, I passed it. This is what the answer page looks like in case you're not sure or you weren't paying attention. Um, so that is how the instructor's guide works. It mentioned using the children's encyclopedia that I got with my history kit. So I don't have it up here to show you. 
that I can show you in my history video. These are the three books that it um, that came with Bookshark Science Level K. So whenever these get scheduled in, you'll see them listed on your grid with page numbers and you would just read them. These two are Usborne books, so they're probably full of pictures with little blurbs of text. Flip randomly in here. So good, simple. This one is like a graphic novel, like a comic book style. So that should be fun. And then this is the DVD. I haven't watched it yet. I think it's just like a science, this guy, these guy, maybe kids doing science experiments that your child can watch. And then this is the activity book. So for instance, in the example week that we looked at, it wanted us to do page 66 and 67. So this is what it looks like. This is why you need the jar, because you're actually going to collect a scoop of dirt, fill this with water, let it sit, let everything settle, and you can kind of see if you've got these layers and kind of see, did you get stones, do you have sand clay, all of this. Um, and then I would just read this to my child, and we kind of look at this and kind of see what's in leaf litter. Maybe get out our magnifying glass and go outside and see if we can find any of the stuff that's in here. Simple, easy. I love kindergarten, you guys. I think it's the best. Just real quick, this is what the inside of the box looks like. There's a bunch of stuff in here. I went through it and took out the yeast packet because the inventory in here told me to keep it in the fridge. Which I think is interesting because I bake and I don't keep my yeast in the fridge. Do you all keep your yeast in the fridge? Is that what I'm supposed to do? My bread always rises. This is an itemized list of what comes in the supply kit. So kind of common items, but maybe like not everybody would have all of these all of the time. And that is it for Bookshark Science Level K. It's not too much stuff, which is good because I have a lot of books in my house. I will put this in a binder and then what I will do is kind of flip through maybe the first eight weeks and see which of these books it references or that I'm going to need. And I'll keep that together with the binder and everything else I kind of put in it for later in the year crate, like milk crate or whatever, wherever I can store it, that it won't go missing. Um, and then I'll keep all of the science kit items in that little box and just store that on a shelf and pull it out as items are required. I will be doing more of these videos. I have a lot of curriculum to show you from Bookshark. And then I also have a big order coming in from Rainbow Resource. If you're interested in seeing Bookshark Language Arts Level K or Level 2, Bookshark History Level K, Level 1 or Level 2, and Bookshark Science 2, you should subscribe because I'm going to be going through all of those. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye.